We open on Mira struggling to do one of Hodor's old jobs. Brano is still spaced out and having some fucking full on visions. I hope she's regretting asking Hodor to hold the bloody door. The dead wankers catch up, but luckily a mysterious bloke with mint flaming bommy knocker skills saves them. Sam has booked a luxury coach for him and Gilly to go to his folks place. They talk about trees and how his dad is racist towards wildlings. Whoa, he grew up like fucking Richie Rich. His mum and sister are really nice, they think Gilly is smoking hot, and they love the child that has none of Sam's genes. Tommen's new best mate asks him if he'd like to see his missus. Because she's taken the god bus, she gets to have clean hair and wear nice but modest non-branded clothing. She tells Tomo how good it is being on the god bus. He's definitely thinking about jumping on it. Back at Meet the Parents 4, Gilly has to dress up like a rich wanker. It's confirmed Sambo's dad is in fact a cunt. He gives Sambo a spray for not going on a diet yet and Gilly tries to stick up for him. But then Randall figures out she's a wildling so goes on a racist rant, points out his big Valerian sword and says cunty things until his longtime wife gets fed up with him and organises a walkout. You know you've gone too far when the Sheilas do a fucking walkout of the party. A confidence boosting kiss, Sambo reneges on the whole idea of leaving Gilly here and his dad is going to kick himself for not having an alarm system installed. Arya is back at the theatre watching a load of anti-Tyrian propaganda bullshit. Lady Crane is the only one holding this train wreck together, but unfortunately Arya has to kill her. They accidentally run into one another. Lady Crane is like, you have hell nice eyebrows, have you ever thought of doing some acting? Aya hasn't had a compliment in a long time, so backtracks on killing her. She recovers Needle, her top secret weapon, while her boss says, I don't know why you hate her so much, but no worries, go kill her. Aya prepares for a blind fight. Mace Tyrell gives a shithouse inspirational speech. Jamie wishes that he was in Braveheart. The Tyrell army gate crashes the High Sparrow's atonement party. Marge is like, fuck's sake, I don't need saving grandma. She's managed to get Tomo on the god bus, so doesn't have to streak anymore. Now there's smug face, sad face, disgusted face, vapid religious face, oh you're a dumb cunt face, confusion and more smug face. Because Tomo didn't like the aggression towards his new mates, he kicks Uncle Dad off of the King's Guard. The Red Wedding after party is still kicking on. Although everyone wants Walder to get some sleep already, he has another drink instead. Ed Muir hasn't had any sleep either. Cersei tells Jamie that getting fired isn't so bad because it presents new opportunities. She reckons he should head to River Run with the phrase to nick the castle back off Blackfish. They celebrate this idea with some good old fashioned incest. The bomby knocker fella keeps his face obscured because he's been waiting five seasons to reveal it like this. It's fucking Uncle Benjen, ladies and gents. Finally, Danny gives an inspirational speech from on top of Drogon. Dario fucking wishes that he was in Braveheart. This episode was so 2013. I think it will be an easy one to pick on, but I did not mind it overall. My favourite scenes were the ones with characters who are in supporting roles, or characters we haven't bloody seen for yonks, or even characters we've never fucking met. James Faulkner is excellent as Randall Tarly. He's like Tywin 2.0, same generation and shit. John Bradley West is not a glamorous actor, but I sincerely think think he is fucking excellent. It wouldn't have been out of character if Sambo did talk back to his dad instead of acting tough behind his back. Anyway, that's a minor little nitpick. Visiting a new place and not having it stink like dawn was fun as fuck. I love that we're so far into the story and there's still white walker denial going on as well, you dickhead. 
Fuck, I enjoy Walter Frey as a human villain. Downtrodden, cranky, slimy bastard. It excites me that some of the Feast for Crows book plots are being salvaged. There's some rich material there, eh? I'm looking forward to seeing River Run. We got Lannisters, Freys and Brienne heading there. I enjoyed the character of Blackfish a lot back in Season 3. Benjen Stark is a cool guy, so I do like that he's starting a new group with Brano. It's very degrading to think that Hodor's door holding only brought about a 30 second lead for Mira and Bran, but let's not overthink it, the poor wanker. I think Arya's plot is picking up nicely. I feel like there's a big twist somewhere to come here. I'm hoping old no one wanted to teach her cool shit, but not give up her whole identity. Oi, the theatre dickheads should recruit Marjorie as an actor. If her plan is to brainwash little impressionable Tommen to get herself out of the nudie walk, then she is worthy of best actress. Hands up if you would have preferred her to stay out of it and let the Lannisters and Tyrells tear shit up. The High Sparrow could become the new Ramsay for me if he continues making so many smart and strong characters look like dumbasses all the time. He's getting off too easy. If Cersei and Jaime keep doing a bunch of tough talk without any follow-up, then they could get a bit stagnant. I lost track and or gave up trying to understand their relationship progression long ago. Cersei's trial by combat will probably be the biggest King's Landing plot point we're all hanging out for, I guess. I didn't mind Danny's end scene. I think it was as much about Drogon's character development than hers. Drogon is ready to stop being so much of a loose cannon and obey his mother, so that's cool. The episode is called Blood of My Blood, which is a Dothraki reference to the relationship between Akal and his blood riders. You may not be family, but if you're chosen as a blood rider by your leader, it's like you share the same blood. Basically like being best mates. Family is a super strong theme we explore broadly in Game of Thrones all the time, so this theme is kind of contrasting that. If you've got a broken or batshit crazy family, you can often find that your best mates are more like family. Outside of Danny choosing every Dothraki wanker to be the blood of her blood, we also see Sam accept young Sam and Gilly as his own blood. He wants to fuck off his family. Tomo fucks off his family to choose the High Sparrow and Academy Award winning Marjorie as his blood riders. Arya has been thinking the faceless men would be cool blood riders, but their lack of identity is actually annoying as fuck, so she wants out. Factions like Stark, Lannisters and Freys that are struggling to keep their families together and powerful are falling behind people who are putting their time into mateship and relationships. It's a cool thought, but I do hope more Starks reunite and kick ass as a family unit, of course. Overall, I didn't mind the pacing change after chaotic times last week. Oh, and that was fun. We got the Tywin shitting himself book version death via the play. You can tell the writers have had a fuckload of fun writing these theatre scenes. That crowd was shit. Oh.